In this crochet tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to create this charming Christmas decor, the Rustic Ruffles Stocking. To create this stocking, you'll need approximately 100 yards of bulky yarn, 80 yards of DK yarn, a 9mm and 5mm crochet hook, measuring tape, a tapestry needle, and scissors. The bulky yarn will be used for the main body of the stocking and mostly worked with the 9mm hook. The DK yarn will be used for the folded layer and ruffles on top. You'll work this with the 5mm hook. Working with the bulky yarn and 9mm hook, you will begin with a magic circle. To create a magic circle, you'll drape the yarn over your fingers with tail closest to you, wrap the yarn around once, place your hook under both strands and pull up a loop and then chain one. Now that your magic circle is set, you'll work eight double crochet into the magic circle, being sure to work around both strands of yarn. Once you have all eight double crochets, pull the tail tightly to close the magic circle. Finish round one by slip stitching into the first stitch of the round to close. You should have a total of eight double crochet for round one. Now we will work round two. Round two will be an increase round. You'll chain one and then work two double crochet in each stitch around. At the end of the row, you should have a total of 16 double crochet. In the round by slip stitching to close. Round three will be another increase round. You're going to chain one, you'll work a double crochet in the first stitch, and then two double crochet in the next stitch. Repeat this pattern of one double crochet and then two double crochet around. You should have 24 stitches at the end of this round and you'll slip stitch into the first stitch to join. At this point, you're going to want to check your gauge. Your first three rounds should have a diameter of 4.25 inches measured straight across the middle of your circle. Now that you have your gauge, we can move on. For rounds four through nine, you will chain one and double crochet 24, one in each stitch around, and then join with a slip stitch at the end. At the end of round nine, you've completed the toe of your stocking. We wanna make sure we're still on track for sizing by measuring our piece at this point. It should be six inches long for the entire nine rounds. Add or remove rounds to meet this measurement. We will now work in rows for a portion to create the heel of the stocking. Chain one and slip stitch five stitches. We're going to do these slip stitches so that we can set our row up to start a few stitches over from our seam so that the, that seam will end up on the bottom of your stocking when it's all finished. This is simply just looks nicer in my opinion. Now we will start the heel rows. You're going to chain one and turn your work. You're going to half double crochet in each of those five slip stitches you just made and then half double crochet five more. You should have a total of 10 half double crochet for row one.
for heel row two, we're gonna chain one, we're gonna turn our work, and then we're gonna half double crochet two together over those first two stitches. And then we will half double crochet in each of the next six stitches, which should leave two stitches unworked at the end of this row. And then when we get to those two stitches, we're going to half double crochet two together over those. This should leave you with eight stitches for this row. For heel row three, we're going to again chain one and turn. Once again, we're going to half double crochet two together over those first two stitches. Then we will half double crochet the next four stitches, leaving the last two unworked, which we will then half double crochet two together over those last two. You should have a total of six half double crochet at the end of this row. And for heel row four, we'll chain one, we'll turn our work, half double crochet two together over the first two stitches. Then you'll work a half double crochet in each of the next two stitches, leaving the last two unworked, which we will then half double crochet two together over those last two. This will give you a total of four half double crochet at the end of this row. Row five, we're gonna switch it up. Now we will chain one, turn our work, but instead of decreasing, we're gonna increase by placing two half double crochet in that first stitch, and then you will work a half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And then in that last stitch, we'll increase again, and you will put two half double crochet in the last stitch. You should have a total of six stitches at the end of this row. Now for heel row six, we'll chain one, turn our work. We'll again increase in that first stitch by placing two half double crochet. Then you'll want to half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. And then you will place two half double crochet in that last stitch. You should have eight half double crochet total at the end of row six. Now for heel row seven, you're going to chain one, turn your work, put two half double crochet in the first stitch, half double crochet in each of the next six stitches, and then place two half double crochet in the last stitch. This should give you a total of 10 stitches. This is our final heel row. So at this point, we're gonna fasten off but make sure that you leave a long tail because we're going to sew our heel together next. Now we will be sewing our heel together. You're going to fold the section you just made in half so that the smallest area is in the middle. Fold them so that the right sides of your heel will be together. Take that first side and sew the flat edge together.
I then like to run my yarn across to the other side through the stitches. This is just so I don't have another end. I'll end up with just the one end at the end of sewing this all together. So I'll just push it through my stitches over to the other side of my work. And then I will do the same as I did on the, on the first side, on the second side, and sew those flat edges together. Once you've completed that second side, you can go ahead and flip your heel right side out. Now we are going to begin working in rounds again to finish the top half of our stocking. You're going to attach your yarn to the sixth stitch over from the right on the heel. You're then going to chain one. You're gonna work a double crochet in that same stitch that you attached to, and then a double crochet in the next four stitches. Next, you will work a half double crochet two together by placing the first half in the side of the heel rows and the second half in the space between the heel and the body of the stocking. Next, you will work 14 double crochet in the stitches across the top of the stocking. And now that you're at the opposite corner, you're going to again put a half double crochet two together over that space between the heel and the body of the stocking and the side of the heel rows. And then to finish off round 10, you are going to double crochet the next five stitches and then join the round with a slip stitch in the first stitch of the round. You should have a total of 26 stitches at the end of the round. Now,
Now for rounds 11 through 20, you're going to chain one and double crochet in each stitch around and then close the round by joining with a slip stitch in the first stitch. You should have a total of 26 stitches for every single one of these rounds. At the end of round 20, you should be able to measure your stocking to make sure that we're still on track for our sizing. Your stocking should measure eight inches from round 10, that first one we did after the heel, up to round 20. If it's not eight inches, you need to add or remove rounds to meet this measurement. Once you have eight inches, you'll finish off the body of the stocking with one last round. You'll chain one and then place a half double crochet in each stitch around, joining with a slip stitch, and you should have a total of 26 at the end of this round. Fasten off because you're now finished with the main body of the stocking. Next, you'll be adding the top ruffle with the DK yarn and the five millimeter hook. Before we move on to the ruffle, we need to make sure that our gauge is correct with our DK yarn. You're gonna to wanna to make a gauge swatch and measure 14 stitches by 10 rows, which should be four inches. To start round one of our ruffle, you're gonna attach yarn to a stitch at the back of the stocking along the fold, working from the wrong side, the inside of the stocking out. You'll chain one, and place two double crochet in each stitch around. And then you will join with a slip stitch to the first stitch and you should have 52 stitches at the end of this round. Now for rounds two through seven, all of these rounds will be done the same. You'll chain one, turn your work, and double crochet in each stitch around, joining to the first stitch with a slip stitch. Each one of these rounds, you should have a total of 52 stitches. For round eight, we're gonna not turn this time, just saying that up front so we don't miss it. Chain one, do not turn, and half double crochet each stitch around, joining to the first stitch with a slip stitch. And again, you should have a total stitch count of 52. And now for round nine, this is where we're going to create the ruffle on our ruffle stocking. So you're going to chain two and you're going to work into the third loop of those half double crochet. You're gonna place three double crochet in the first stitch and two double crochet in the next. You're gonna repeat this pattern of three in the stitch, two in the next, all the way around and join the end of this round, you should have a total stitch count of 130.
Now on around 10, for round 10, we're gonna chain two, turn our work, and place a double crochet in each stitch around, joining to the first stitch with a slip stitch. And again, you should have a count of 130 stitches. And for round 11, our final round of this ruffle, we're going to chain two, turn our work, and we are going to place a treble crochet in each stitch around, joining at the end to the first stitch with a slip stitch. And once again, this should have a total stitch count of 130. Once you've fastened off, now you can pull that top part with of the DK weight yarn down over the body or bulky section of the stocking. I pull it all the way down so that the first round of DK is right at the top matched up with that last round of half double crochet in the bulky yarn. Now for the final touch on our stocking, we're going to add a loop for you to hang the stocking with. Now there are two ways you can do this. One is to simply take a length of your bulky yarn and your five millimeter hook and make a chain of 15 and sew that in a loop in place on the back fold of your stocking. Or if you left a long tail after finishing off with your bulky yarn when you made the body of your stocking, you can push your hook through a stitch in the back fold of the stocking, draw up a loop of that fastened off tail chain 15 with your five millimeter hook of that, fasten off, and then use the other end and sew it into a loop alongside where you pulled that yarn through. Either way works perfectly fine. I just think it's a little bit easier if you use the leftover yarn, but I've also done it the other way and it holds up just fine. And with that, you have completed the Rustic Ruffles stocking pattern. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope that you enjoyed this pattern and that you got a adorable stocking to decorate your home with this year. You can make this stocking in so many different color combinations. You can even find ways to decorate the top. Like I like to put some of the bulky yarn and weave it through and tie a little bow to finish it off. I also, suggest that if you don't have any bulky yarn, you can make this by just holding two strands of worsted weight yarn together. I did that with this tweed version right here and it worked perfectly fine. You can find links to the blog post and the PDF pattern for this if you want one of those to read along and I hope that you'll join me in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. I always appreciate a thumbs up on my videos and if you subscribe, you'll always be notified when a new video comes out.